In this Tanzu Kubernetes grid demonstration, I'm going to show you how to deploy TKG from the command line. In my vSphere environment, I already have a number of templates that are required for TKG deployment from the command line. Uh, you can find all the information about the different OVAs in my VMware. You can see that there's some image OVAs for the controllers and the workers, and there's also a HA proxy image. These have already been imported into my vSphere environment and converted to templates. There's some other useful information on my VMware as well, such as the crash diagnostic tool and so on. Uh, you can download them from there if you so wish. Let's now get on to my command line. And the TKG CLI tool has already been installed, as you can see here. And there is a link to the documentation if you run the help facility and it tells you all the information you need about deploying Tanzu Kubernetes Grid from the command line and indeed from other environments as well. So uh, one more thing to look at now as we return to the command line is to actually look at how we initialize our management cluster. And you do that through a TKG init command. Our infrastructure is obviously vSphere and we're just going to use the default plan of dev, which is one uh, controller uh, node and one worker node. Now we do have to create a config manifest file. Um, the default location for this is in your .tkg and in a file called config.yaml. Now you could put it somewhere else and you could certainly reference it in each of the TKG commands, but I find it most useful just to put it in, in the default location. And use it like so. Now this is vSphere 7 and the best way to consume TKG in vSphere 7 is with vSphere with Kubernetes but we could also deploy it standalone which is what we are looking at at the moment. Now how this is uh, instantiated is that we stand up a Kubernetes cluster using kind and that Kubernetes cluster is then used to create the bootstrap cluster and we can have a closer look at that bootstrap cluster by using the kube config that has been displayed there. And here you can see all the different information uh, around the bootstrap cluster, the kind cluster that we are using to deploy the management cluster. So you get a whole um, a host of information. Obviously, a lot of different pods are instantiated. The typical Kubernetes ones there, such as Kubeproxy and etcd and so on. But you can see the cert manager and all of the cluster API related pods are being stood up there at the same time. So we'll just speed things up a little bit. I will say that the whole deployment took around 10 minutes, the 10 minute mark. Um, but uh, thankfully, we're able to speed a lot of that up here. So once the bootstrap cluster is set up, we can actually deploy our management cluster in earnest. And you can see that coming up there. And then what we do is we essentially switch control or switch context from the bootstrap cluster over to our actual management cluster. And so now it looks like our management cluster has been created. I'm going to unset the context from the bootstrap cluster and actually switch context now to our new management cluster. And we can see it in there, it's just that it hasn't been selected, so we will just select that next, like so. And now we can actually query the actual management cluster that we have just deployed. You can see that it's listed as a cluster type object or kind. And we can also use the TKG tool to query the management cluster as well. So now one last thing, if we just have a look at the nodes that were deployed, we looked, we did say it was going to be a dev plan, which is one controller and one worker. And if we look back in our folder that we selected in our config YAML, we do and see the same thing. So that completes the demonstration 